What is up YouTube and all my fish keeping friends? How is everybody doing out there in fish tank land? Today I want to share with you my new fish tank rack. I just got off of work. I'm going to go ahead and set it up now. I've been waiting until the right time. I also have some new supplies and equipment that has come in as well that I'm really happy about. And I want to go ahead and give you guys a tour of everything that I got going on in the fish studio. Don't go anywhere. So I want to say a big thank you to Ginger Graves, which really helped me to get this rack here. Uh, this is a Husky rack, 77 inches, comes from Home Depot, runs for about $170. Uh, it's pretty much the best thing that you're going to get besides going to like the full-on industrial kind of warehouse uh, shelving system. And I also have some other cool stuff that just came in from an anonymous uh, benefactor. I got these two Tetra air pumps. These are really sweet. It's the Tetra Whisper 100. So I got two of those, which are gonna work for this rack. Probably more than what I need for the tanks that I'm gonna be uh, putting onto this rack. Uh, and then I have a whole bunch of these uh, traditional uh, double sponge, sponge filters. These are perfect, uh, lightweight, simple. Stick to the glass, not to the bottom of the tank. So it's really nice. So I have not just, uh, <laughs> four but i have eight 16 i have 16 of these this is so awesome i really do appreciate this i want to thank you guys so much i appreciate everybody's support that's really helping me to make this happen and i'm really 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 stoked about this so i'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna cut into this box and get this thing set up i want to go ahead and show you guys everything that's going on in here A lot of you guys know exactly what we're looking at here and have probably set one of these up before. So I'm not gonna completely bore everybody out there with this, uh, but this is a really simple racking unit. So this racking unit or shelving unit has a few basic pieces. You have these main runners. It's gonna be two for each shelving unit. So you have two, four, six, eight here. And then you have the wire shelves, which are gonna go run across them. Uh, you have the two main end pieces here behind me and then there's going to be these cross members that look like they go in between these two uh, trusses or whatnot um looks like they're going to take screws but i haven't found any screws or nuts or bolts or anything like that yet so we'll see what happens with that so i'm going handheld for a second i want to show you guys something that's really kind of important uh probably the most important thing especially if you're doing this by yourself probably the most important thing is to start with the bottom shelf and set up two sides and get those hammered in with a rubber mallet or something really hard uh, that's not gonna beat them up. Uh, and get those in for sure. They're gonna slide into these little sections here and then come over and do the other side. And you can literally do this by yourself, but you wanna do the bottom one first so it's got some structural integrity and then you can just work your way up without a problem and don't take out any of your fish tanks. Okay, there she is. That's uh not all of it but that's the main pieces all in and she's pretty sturdy right now already now you can see how they just they slide in here and you can beat them down a little bit with a rubber mallet and it gets them in place i i love how i'm i love how i'm just seeing this pretty little uh red little note here this is stop please contact us do not return this to the store you know i wish i would have saw that before but that's pretty cute so I'm pretty sure that has something to do with the lack of screws and things that are not here. These cross members that we have here that have to go across. I'm gonna figure out how they get connected. I've got these little plastic things that come with the kit. These little plastic tabs that that's not gonna do anything for me. I might have to retrofit this. I would have to say no matter what, you're gonna wanna retrofit this shelving unit so that uh, it's much more secure. A lot of people will put plywood on top of here instead of those wire shelving racks. Uh, now these wire racks, they can take a lot of weight, honestly. I'm only doing 10s and 20s, so I could totally, probably completely get away with that, but they are gonna bow a little bit. So um, that's really the issue is it's not gonna be a completely level surface and you could end up putting pressure on tanks and cracking them. So this rack looks pretty ready, I know, but it's got, a lot of things that need to be fixed on it before it's really good for fish tanks. Uh, there's a few design flaws that I knew about. I checked this out on YouTube about 
five or six reviews on it and there's definitely some not necessarily design flaws but there's some things about this that you definitely have to change for aquariums uh, if you want it to work properly and you want it to be safe so the first thing that i want to show you guys that you really kind of have to deal with is these cross beams here now they have a hole here where they have this little plastic thing that you should they want you to put in that hole that plastic thing is just going to break it's not going to do anything uh so you really need to get nuts and bolts for this spot it's going to be hard to get in here but you're going to have to put a nut and bolt here and on that end on each one of these there's three for each sh uh, shelf so you need to replace you need to add those nuts and bolts that's definitely something that needs to happen and when it comes to these wire shelves they're actually a problem too uh, you would think that they would work but um, about every three or four runs, there's a run that sticks up on, on the top side. So it's 11 and a half inches here, so you can't put a tank between here. 15 inches in here, you could fit a tank in here, but it's, you're, not gonna, you're not gonna have a level surface because of this. So you're still gonna have a problem with 10s and 20s going long ways with them here. Uh, so this really needs to get replaced. My plan was to take wood runners and run them across kind of like these are but on the top of here or fit them sit them in this in this lip right here and run wood across all the way down uh, where the tanks are going to meet and overlap and do them like one by fours and i think that's what i'm going to do because i cannot afford to buy two whole sheets of plywood uh, just for this rack i just really can't see myself spending that much money on wood especially the price of pressure treated lumber here in the Caribbean. So those are really the two main design flaws that are kind of a problem with this rack. Besides that, this thing is a really solid rack and I'm really excited to have it. Thank you again, once, you know, once again to Ginger Graves. Thank you so much. So let's go ahead and take a look at everything I got going on in my fish room. I got uh, some projects and a lot of things that are gonna get really vamped up once I get them on this shelving unit so let's go ahead and look at everything okay guys so we're going handheld and i'm gonna i got lights and everything so this place is a this is a mess total mess i have my wild guppies uh, my local wild guppies in here this is a batch i collected about a year ago in here and this is a batch in here that just finished quarantining and i'm going through them uh, this batch i collected about two months ago here locally uh, so different locations as well so I'm definitely keeping the genetics separate for now until I, I can get a closer look at them. Uh, and this is done all tight with this rack right here. So down here, obviously we have the Amazon biotope tank. A lot is gonna happen in here. You can see that the botanicals have really knocked back here. They're really, really broken down uh, and they're ready for more. Uh, we've had some problems in here. There's some videos, I'll put a card above for the video on uh, on, on the mayhem with this tank, but um, I did have to uh, treat it for a couple of different uh, parasites and whatnot. Uh, we had the Imperial Tetras in here from that we collected in uh, in Peru. So besides that, we'll move on to the next thing. Here we got my bow face tank. I've been having fun with this. I've got the Valsinari, the Spiralis in here that I got from Lucas Bretts. It's really doing good. I'm really stoked with that stuff. Uh, it's got, I got it in the back right there and I have it spread out all over the tank. I'm just going to let it go a little nuts. Um, I got some really killer shrimp in here. I put only females in this tank. Uh, they're red cherry uh, neos with a little bit of a back line going on. And I added a couple more females. They're smaller, but uh, they really just blow up in here without any males. And uh, just plenty of algae to eat and stuff like that. But I love this tank. This one originally was a community tank. Right now, it has my Apistos in here. And uh, I've got three pairs of Apistos and their own coconuts hanging out in the back. They lay low key at the bottom. I have a couple of carried, uh, some, uh, I have some uh, neon tetras in the back there that were, uh, have, have survived over the last couple of years from when it was a community tank. Uh, there's a coolie loach in there as well, somewhere hiding out. Uh, so let's see, we got the main rack over here that you guys always see on my streams in the background. We have the uh, 55 on top with Elliot with the snowflake eel and he's chilling out. I've been feeding him a little extra lately and he's been getting excited. He did jump out of the tank not too long ago again. 
Um, I had the top off up here and I was feeding him and he got really excited and jumped out of the tank after the food. I was on the phone, had to hang up. Uh, he was on the floor here squirming around. I had to run and grab a towel because you can't pick them up with their bare hands. And I had to lift them up over my head and get them back in this tank. Literally threw him in the towel in the tank together to make sure he went back in the tank. Um, but I'm working on a more secure lid. I actually have the original lid back here in the corner behind this rack. But I need to get a proper light for that. I've invested in a new uh, LED strip for that. I need like a 36 inch light for this. And then I would, uh, it'll hide, it'll fill up the hole and I need to put a new lid on top of there. Or the old, anyways. So right next to Elliot, I have the killifish. I have a male killifish in here. Originally I had the beta fish in here and I moved him. But now we have the, uh, the one male killifish while I'm breeding the other two. Uh, I have a male, a male and female and another tank. Eventually I'm going to go ahead and put him with the female and let them breed and give the other male uh, a break because she's starting to beat him up. Uh, so I got my four tanks down here at the bottom of this rack. I built this rack myself. I built it way before YouTube so I don't have any kind of a build video on that. It's two by fours and one by eights as the lids here. We have my paludarium which is completely overgrown and I got to do a video and show you guys uh, me trimming that up. And that's happening. We have my yellow King Kong tank, which has the, the, the forever bacteria bloom. And I have to just keep everything isolated over here. And I'm ready to just nuke this tank. I'm ready to just tear it down. It's going to get torn down. Once this rack goes up completely, I can start uh, moving some things around, get those caridinas in another tank. So we have my planet tank down here. I've been having a good time with these leucistic guppies. They're making bunches of little babies. There's some more babies back there and the rotella. Um, I move all of the babies over here into this tank for now until this tank gets scaped very soon. This is going to be a black water beta fish tank. Um, so they're just holding in here for now until I set up a grow out tub for them uh, with some of the new sponge filters I got in, things like that. So that's what's going on in the living room. Let's try not to trip over anything, make my way into the kitchen, which now this is all one studio, you guys. Uh, this is my life. This is my passion. I can walk around the room 360. This is it some people say i don't even have a bedroom it's here somewhere hidden but um for the most part i just live in a fish room so i got my water out here and my that's my front door over there somewhere hidden behind all this stuff you have all my all my dry the whole corner of dried botanicals it's all my shipping materials all my packing materials for shipping livestock i also have my prototype over there in a box i got something to release to you guys but i can't tell you about it yet uh so it's just how it is. This is a full on room. I keep my meds over here. All this stuff will get moved around once that rack makes it into this room here. So uh, this shelving unit here is going to be gone. All these tanks are going to be on the new rack. This refrigerator will get moved as well. So this whole wall will be tanks here. Um, so things are going to get moved around. Things will change. I might actually be able to create a little bit better of a lab space on this end of the room um this this garbage can here which is my holding tank for rodi water is going inside of this chamber here it's actually going to go in here at the bottom so everything in this unit is going to get moved up and mounted up high uh, i have another booster pump coming from aquatic life that's going to go uh, with the aquatic life rodi system i'm also going to get a, a double uh, DI filter. So I'll actually have three DI resin cartridges that the water will go through to actually uh, conserve on water. I'll actually get more water out of my water, <laughs> more RODI water out of my water. Um, so all this will go up there. That garbage can will come in here and sit right underneath here. It will have a lid on top of it permanently plumbed into here. And I'll just have an outlet on the side with a hose that hangs here and I can move around the room and fill tanks. I was going to plumb, but I'm renting or I would plumb up to the ceiling and run lines out. I could totally do that with irrigation lines, run it across the ceiling and down to the tanks, but it is what it is. So um, I'm just going to try to keep it mobile and keep it simple for now. Uh, that light's not, have, not really nice for the camera, but we have beautiful little beta splendens in here he's chilling out in this tank um i'm really really i'm really loving him we got to give him a name we're going to work on that we're going to work on that um we have blue bolts in here they're just hiding out for me lately really kind of frustrating me 
been keeping the water temperature nice and cool for them, about 72 degrees, but they just hide in the back and I hardly ever see them. I got this light dyed on me, uh, which I have some wild guppies. You guys saw that video just recently, and right after that, the, the light died, so that was awesome. Um, we have my blue tetras down here. We're working on third tank soon. This tank's about to have to get split. We got a lot of fry in here. This tank's gonna have to get split into two more colonies. Um, either way, I wanna have three colonies that I'm breeding soon enough once the rack goes up once again um this is a breeding shrimp for profit tank which i haven't really shared with anybody there's hundreds of uh neocaridina red cherry shrimp in here nothing special um they're not really really dark or anything special you'd see them better on this camera right now but um yeah i got those going on those are all going out selling those to the pet stores in the big island uh, and it's actually just store credit for my aquariums that i have coming in well as you guys can see there is a lot of stuff going on here and i got a, a lot of projects that are going to be able to be expanded on this rack uh, so i really appreciate it thank you again to ginger graves for your support and making this possible thank you to all of my patreons out there and all my supporters that help helping me get to aqua shell and the aquatic experience be able to film and share that with you guys uh, it means so much to me uh, this this community is a beautiful uh, community and uh, Living here on the island, you guys are really my fish club in my community, so it means it means it means so much to me. Uh, thank you guys again, and uh, remember, keep your tanks clean, your fish fed, and have fun.